Welcome to a new season where we discover from a prophetic and messianic perspective the call and destiny that God has on our lives. I'm your host, Kim Boleyn. Join me as we take practical steps into a new season together. If you want to experience miracles and God's best plan for your life, then you are at the right place and at the right time. Isn't it time for a new season? Hello, everyone. This is Kim Bolin, and welcome to my podcast, A New Season. I pray you had an awesome week. We're going to discuss today about the steps that it takes to move toward your destiny. And we're going to talk about practical things that you can do to really make it fun so you can get up in the morning and be excited about what God's doing in your life for the day. How awesome would that be? I mean, how long has it been since you've really been excited about getting up in Monday morning and go, oh, I just can't wait to do the things I have to do today. What, you're not there? Well, you know what? I get it. I'm right there with you, and I am doing practical things to move toward my destiny, too. So we're going to do this together, and we're going to figure out some ways to help you move forward so you can be excited about getting up on Monday mornings. Yes, amen. One of the things that I talk about in my book, Do What You Dream, is writing it down. It's kind of gotten to be kind of a joke at this point because I have said it so much that I'm sure those that have listened to me from the beginning are probably sick of hearing it. (laughs) Uh, yeah, I, I get it, guys. You know what? I just let you know, I'm one of those people when they say, write it down, do this. I'm going, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I mean, I used to be like that. It's like, I'm not doing that. I don't want to write it down. I don't have to write it down. I know what I want. Just leave me alone. Anybody there? Uh, I used to be. And then I found out how important it is to write it down. You need to write it down. You need to write it down. You need to write it down. When you can put it in front of you and when you can look at it, it has a different effect that it has on the brain. You look at it and you can see it and you start meditating on it. What do you really want to do with your life? You know, and I've said this before, guys, write everything down that you like. Write whatever comes into your head. It can be, I mean, outrageous stuff. It's like, oh my goodness, I want to see the colors of the rainbow, or I want to see the colors in heaven, or I want to count the amount of wildflowers on a meadow side, or whatever. I mean, it's just put whatever comes in your head and start dreaming. Those things that you really love to do will start coming to the surface, and you will be able to start whittling it down and crossing the things out that you go, okay, maybe I can't look at rainbow colors in heaven right now. Well, maybe you can. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are going to heaven right now, but I'd say that's not your first priority. <laughs> maybe you want to study the rainbow. Maybe you want to study why there's a prism, why the colors come out like they do. Maybe that's something you want to do. Maybe you want to look at the flowers and you want to be maybe a botanist or somebody that goes out in the forest and and learns about the flora and the fauna and all the stuff that's out there. Maybe that's something that's really exciting for you. Maybe you're someone who's more practical and you want to be an engineer or an airline pilot or a race car driver. That's real practical, right? (laughs) Whatever it is, guys, dream, 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 dream. And then when you get it down to the most two or three important ones that really, really, really are on your heart, and I don't care how impractical it sounds, I don't care how far away it seems, the ones that are so deep that you go, oh, those things hurt when I think about them, or oh, I would really, 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 really like to do that, write that down, because that's the thing that we're going to focus on. Then look at the big picture. Do you know what the big picture is? I'm still trying to figure that out too for my own life, guys. You know, doing voiceover and doing these podcasts are huge in my life right now. My goal is to make enough money in my own home business to be able to do ministry freely where I can go out and do it and be free and just be the person God created me to be. And then be able to do speaking engagements once in a while and maybe write some more books and be able to minister to people and maybe be able to dance again and do photography again and 
just a lot of the things that I want to, but I have to have money to do that. Or a rich husband. <laughs> a rich husband might be easier. <laughs> but anyway, guys, and if you know me, you know that I'm not looking for a husband. <laughs> I am doing very well by myself, thank you. It would have to be a very divine appointment if something like that happened again. But anyway, let's get back to the subject. <laughs> The big picture is something you go, okay, I would really like to do this. This is the final thing. I would love to have a a big office downtown or a warehouse to manufacture this or whatever it is. And if you don't know the big picture, guys, ask the Lord to show you what the big picture is. God will show you the plan. He'll show you what it looks like, what it feels like, just everything about it. He'll show you what the plan is. And because it's not just the desires that he has that you want to do. He's put those desires in your heart so that you can fulfill them. And he really wants you to fulfill them more than you do. He is really excited about us fulfilling our destiny. And that is exciting when you think that he wants it more than we do. Because that means if we even have an inkling of moving toward that, he's going to be right there to help us along. Hallelujah. That's good news, guys. That is good news. That means getting out of the rut. That means getting out of the junk. That means getting out of the doldrums. That means getting out of the garbage. Hallelujah. And I know that most of us are really wanting to do that. There's a few of us out there that are born with a so-called silver spoon in our mouths. Oh my gosh. But there's not very many people. That's the top one percenters, guys. There's not very many people that have it easy. And even those people have problems. There's, (laughs) There's, <laughs> I don't know who said it, but somebody once said that money doesn't buy happiness, but it sure takes the sting out of misery. <laughs> I agree with that. I'd rather be wealthy with a little bit of stuff that you have to go through than to be poor and have to go through it. It makes it a hundred thousand times harder. And God wants us to have wealth. Proverbs says that God helps us to produce wealth and he adds no trouble to it. Amen. And wealth's just the means, guys. It is not the end. It is not what we live for. It is what we're doing and going towards so we can use that provision, use the money, use whatever God provides for us so that we can do the things that he's called us to. Money is just a means, guys. It's not the end. We're not to be Ebenezer Scrooge and go, bah humbug. We are to use that money for God's glory and to have fun and to do some things to bless people. There's a lot of things money's good for, guys. It's not the money that's the root of all kinds of evil, guys. It's the love of money. So money in itself is neither good or bad. It's just a means to an end. And through the glory of God, it is a good thing that we can use. Yeshua taught a lot about money, guys. So it would behoove us to know how to use the money and what are you going to do with it once he gives you the money? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about that maybe wonder upon wonders You may succeed at your dreams, and you may become wealthy. Have you ever even thought about that? What are you going to do when you do have money? Some people go, well, I'll just pay my bills and just have enough to get by. Is that what you want? Will that change? Well, that'll help. But will it change your community? Will it change your world? Will it change other people's lives? To a point, maybe, but not a lot. So what else do you want to do? Buy a mansion? Buy a Lamborghini? You know, really, what do you want? Those things, okay, once you get all the things that you want, then what are you going to do with it? You know, there's people that are billionaires, and they have more money than they can spend. So what they started doing is philanthropic things for others to do good things for the community. Money can be a good thing, guys, if we use it in the right way. But getting back to the practical steps to get there... What are the practical steps? You got the big picture, then you need to bring it down to bite-sized pieces. Okay, let's say the big picture takes, let's just, I'm throwing out numbers, okay? Five years. It doesn't have to take that long, but let's just say it takes five years. Okay, what happens for the three years or the two years or the one year and then six months and then a month and then a week and then a day? What are you going to do each day to get there a baby step at a time? Each day, working on something that you love will really make a difference on how you feel about your life. It will take the sting 
out of having to go to a job that you hate. If you feel like there's hope, guys, that is a thing that most people don't have. I can't even tell you how many people I see walking down the street and they have no hope. Sometimes I just want to stop my car if I'm driving by and just go, there is hope. 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 One of my dreams, guys, is to have dream workshops, places where people can come and I just do things to help them dream, where they can write down their dreams, where we can pray about it, where we can say, okay, what are the practical steps to get there? And I address this in my book, Do It Your Dream. But one of the things that I always wanted to do when I was young was become a professional photographer. And I probably have mentioned this before to you guys, but it was really a deep, 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 deep desire. I mean, that's the thing I wanted to do more than anything in the world. So I had to think about what's the big picture. At one time, I wanted to be a motion picture director and producer. And I still could do that if I really wanted to. But my life's changed a little bit, so I'm kind of going in a different direction now. <laughs> still love the arts, though, guys. And the first thing I had to do was learn how to use a camera. <laughs> that would help, wouldn't it? So I started calling around at different schools, finding out which programs were the best. And I landed on a technical college. It was the best one. It had a two-year degree. It had a year of black and white, year of color. It had the theory and practical application. It taught you business. It taught you all kinds of aspects of what professional photography was and how to do it as a business. So I went to an interview, talked to the instructors, got enrolled, and I graduated. And you know what? We started out with 40 students, and we ended up with seven of us graduating. And I was the only woman that graduated. It was awesome. I mean, I felt like I really accomplished something with my life at that time. Because I came out of a bad lifestyle before I knew the Lord, guys. So this was a huge, 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 big step for me. Now my life has gone into a different direction. So I have to think, what do I really want to do now? Part of me wants to travel some. Then another part of me wants things like a horse. I love horses. I mean, I really love horses. So one of the things that my goal is in this life is to get another horse. I had a horse when I was in Colorado, and when I moved up to Seattle, I had to give up all my animals. And I can't even tell you how hard it was to give up my animals, especially my horse. Well, then I had two kitties, and I used to call them my boys, and I had to give them up. And oh, man, I miss my kitties, I miss my boys, and I miss my dog. And then I miss my daughter's kitty, too, because I had to take her because my daughter couldn't move with her. So I had three cats, a dog, and a horse. And I loved my animals. I loved them, loved them, loved them. I had to give them up. That was hard. So I've asked the Lord, God, when I get settled again, I really want a horse. I really want a horse. I really want a horse. I already know what kind I want. I already know what color. And so I've just put that before the Lord, and I said, God, you know I really want a horse. So one of the things I will do when I get settled is look around, see who the horse people are, see if there's something around that I can go look at them, price them, maybe ride them, see how they are. I will take practical steps on moving forward to get that dream of having a horse. Now, what are you going to do to take a baby step towards your dream? Let's say you want to be an airline pilot and you've never even been in a plane. What can you do to see what it takes to become an airline pilot? This is something you really, 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 really want to do. First of all, you have to learn how to fly. <laughs> Going to school to learn how to become a pilot is a good idea. Let me tell you, I don't want to be in the plane if you do not know how to fly it. <laughs> But learning how to fly, so that means you need to go to school. And if you're going, I don't have the money, see about what grants there are, what scholarships they have, what can you do to work part-time or full-time, whatever it takes, to get the money to go to school. What things do you have to whittle off that you really don't need so you can get that goal, just to go to school to become an airline pilot? What things can you sell off so you can do it? How serious are you that you want to do? You know what most people's biggest obstacle is? Fear. I'm afraid. 
I don't think I can do this. What if I fail? People are going to laugh at me. Who cares what people think, guys? I know sometimes we care. I mean, sometimes we really do care what people think. But you know what? That will stop us from living our dreams. And you know what? People don't care. They don't care about us enough. If they're making fun of us, they are not your friends and they don't care about you. What do you need to do? How much is it? Can you learn like the basics? Can you talk to somebody and get to know some of the pilots in the area? Can you talk to them and say, hey, this is what I want to do. What kind of things could you suggest me getting to the point where I can take flying lessons so I can learn to do this? How did you do it? What did you do? Find out what other people have done to obtain their dreams. Then act on it. Go for it. Follow suggestions. Try it. If you make mistakes, don't worry about it. God allows for <laughs> U-turns. <laughs> but God will pick you up again and say, try again. Try again. Try again. You're going to have to go through a few times of failing to get to the place of success. Sometimes that's just the way it is, guys. I don't know if I know anyone who hasn't made mistakes, failed, fallen on their face, it looked ridiculous, been humiliated. I mean, there, there's a million things. I don't know of anybody who hasn't gone through the bumps and the bruises and the hard knocks to get to where they want to go to their dreams. You have to be willing to go through the junk. If you love it, guys, it'll help you get past the obstacles because there will be obstacles. Satan will make sure there's obstacles. And when you get to those obstacles, you have a decision. Are you going to go through it? Get the baby step, guys. Write it down. Find out what your deep, 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 deep desire is. And I don't care how crazy or how impractical it seems. What can you do to go toward that dream today? Call somebody. Find out if you can meet someone who's doing the same thing. Ask them. Most people love to talk about themselves, so ask them. See if you can make an appointment to talk to them. Go to places where they hang out, if there's, a, if there's that kind of place. Meet people in different organizations, or sometimes there's divine appointments. God will just put somebody in front of you. Just go forward. Have people pray with you. Ones that you can trust, because there are people that will just, you won't want to ask them. <laughs> Better not to say anything to those kind of people. But there are going to be those that will go, oh, that's awesome, man. I'll help you do that. And you'll have friends that will be willing to do that. So what can you do today to take that baby step forward? Who can you call? Who can you meet? Who can you make an appointment with? Who can you ask? What can you look up on the internet to really help you to move forward toward your destiny? And I don't care if people have told you all your life that you cannot do it. It is not true. It is not true. It is not true. What is the baby step? If you're stumped, guys, email me. Go to www.kimbolin.com and send me a message. I'll pray with you. If I don't have an answer, we'll find it out together. Or go to amazon.com, buy my book, Do What You Dream. It has practical steps. Do what it takes, guys. There's lots of things out there. You can find so much on the internet. Well, good and bad. <laughs> but there's a lot of things that you can find on the internet that will really help you move towards your dreams. And people that have better ideas than I do, go for it, guys. I'm your cheerleader. Just go for it. Rah, rah, rah. Go for it. <laughs> go for it, guys. I'm encouraging you. Go for it. I'm doing the same things. I'm having to go out there and go, okay, God, we're doing this. I'm going to live my dreams. And that means moving. That means getting my stuff. That means changing directions, what I've done for a long, long time. And you know what? I'm in my 60s now, guys. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I'm in my 60s. Ah! But you know what? God is guiding me in my dreams. You're never too old. It's never too late. And there is always opportunity. My encouragement for you this week, guys, is go for it in the name of Yeshua. Amen. I'm going to give the ironic blessing. Yivarechacha Adonai v'yishmarecha. Ya'er Adonai panavalecha v'chunecha. Yisa Adonai panavalecha v'yasim lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom, his peace, his wholeness, his mercy and goodness. May you take that baby step this week, guys. May you be encouraged to live your dreams. Move forward into the things that God has for you so that you can be all that he created you to be, so that you can fit into your rightful place in the kingdom. Have an awesome week, and thanks for joining me. Shalom. Thank you for joining me for this week's episode of A New Season. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter, or visit my website at kimbolin.com. Join us next week as we continue to pursue our dreams and discover our destiny. It's time to enter into a new season.